You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something my on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of After Class, Coach Gill's episode. Anyway, all let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm? Did you spray some kind of fragrance in here? What do you mean? There's a faint, sweet, woody smell in this room. Whoa, we could pick that up? I didn't even smell it. Is it because I've been sick and sticking around Edgar? I mean, yeah, he smells pleasant, but I never gave it too much thought. Hmm. I pretend to sniff around myself while making a plausible excuse in my mind. Oh, I was uh, trying out fragrances at the shopping district earlier. I gave myself another sniff again on the armpit. I smell okay, but definitely not woody like he described. Yeah, I still smell like it. Sorry about that. That's a good excuse, and if I say that, if I say so myself, there's no way you'd come close and sniff my armpit, yeah? Why would you put them on your armpits? Uh, why not? Maybe I'm sweating a lot after doing chores, and I want to smell nice. Huh, weirdo. I got a shower, and here's, and here's our dinner. Feel free to eat without me. I'll wait. After putting the paper bag onto the countertop, he heads into the bathroom. I think I need to change my clothes now, or else he'll get suspicious. Inside the paper bag, there are two smaller bags which contain a small styrofoam container in each. It reminds me of... Matryoshka? Reminds me of Matryoshka dolls. Apparently, we're having Chinese food for dinner. I bought this from this new, from this new food place that was opened months ago. Oh, where's it located? Oh, uh, it's in the midpoint between this place and my school. I see. I'll add that to my destination list. What for? In case I want to go out for walks and I get hungry. Ha! Huh, fair enough. We ate dinner together, and since the food came with disposable wooden chopsticks, there's no need for us to do the dishes tonight. We decided to talk for a good while before deciding to take it easy for the night. It was mostly idle chatter. I asked how his day went, and it seemed like he had an okay day at work. Students weren't being a hassle. Coworkers not gossiping about him. Everything was, quote, Gucci, end of quote. He asked for mine, and I told him how it went with some details left out, especially the one where I had someone coming over and had to, had to witness him jumping off the balcony. His day was considerably tame compared to mine, but he didn't have to know about it. And once we were done talking for the night, we said goodnight to each other and headed to a bed together, in different rooms, of course. Entry 7. Seventh day. Saturday. It's been almost a week since I left my house. At this point, I've slowly gotten accustomed to my life in Farfetch. Hendrick's not working today since it's Saturday, so he's sleeping in, which is fair. I would sleep in if I was working as hard as him, to be honest. As for me, I've made running my daily routine. It's good to move around, and that I can use, uh, I can use that excuse to visit Edgar. When he's home, at least. He hasn't been home for two days, and I heard he won't be until Monday. Don't get the wrong idea. There's nothing going on. I just enjoy hanging out with him. That aside, today will be the first day of me tutoring Henry. I hope things will go well. I suppose I can say hello to them, since I heard Phyllis is going to be home later today. It might be a good time to check up on the boys, too. Before starting my jog, I stretch my body. It's good to practice to warm up before exercising to avoid straining your muscles. Oh, good morning, Gilly. G Gilly? Ah, good morning. This is one of the residents in this apartment, and also the one I'm most acquainted with. There are other residents here that I talk with sometimes, but she's the only one I see every morning because I have the same schedule as this sweet old lady, more or less. At least when it comes to our morning exercises. Are you going for a jog? Mm-hmm. I see that you're headed out for a walk, too. Yes. I'm too old for jogs, so I settle with daily walks instead. You're still walking regularly, though, so that's good. Ha! I suppose so. Oh, where are you going today? You got a backpack with you? Ah, uh, I have plans after this, but I can't afford going back here, so I decided to bring an extra pair of clean clothes with me. I see. Go, I won't hold you longer, Gilly. You too. Have a good day. She, walk, she walks away slowly while I continue stretching my body. When I feel it's enough stretching, I make my way towards the Graham residence. Usually I'd see Edgar watering the plants outside. One time I saw Phyllis just talking with her neighbors. Without either, without either or both of them, the place seems empty. She told me there's a housemaid who lives here when they're both absent. They leave during weekends. I should make a good impression. I don't want them to say something weird about me. I approached the entrance and pressed the doorbell, waiting for the door to be opened. The door opens. I was half expecting it to be the maid, but instead, it's Henry. Or it could be Herbert. Is it, is it the clothes? His expression? I don't know. Something tells me this is Henry. But what if they've been playing a prank on me? Sometimes I'm seeing Henry, sometimes Herbert. Uh, hello? 
He opens the door, sure, and he said hello to me. But the door is barely open and he's standing behind it. Oh, hey, Henry, good morning. Gilbert? My parents aren't home right now, could you come another time? But I just got here. I don't think it's safe to be alone with you in this house. What does that mean? I don't know, you seem like a weird person, and I'm worried about my safety. Weird person? Where did you get that idea? When you first talked to me about showering together and all that? I thought we were past that. Probably. Come on, you can't just ask me to go back after coming here. I even brought some clean clothes since I thought I'd borrow the bathroom. Don't do anything weird. I'll report you to the police. Police, huh? I don't want to deal with them if possible. Wait, it's not like I'm going to do anything weird. I have a good moral compass. Also, he's a minor. I'm supposed to be protecting him, not the opposite. Is he a minor, though? Really? Is he a minor? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever seen a minor that fucking jacked. I promise. Nothing weird. Okay. Thought you guys had a maid, but I don't see them. He looks shocked as, a fran as he frantically grabs his, grabs his phone. His eyes speak horror. What did I do wrong this time? Are you a stalker? What? No! Phyllis told me about the maid. Oh. Sorry. You watch way too many TV shows. It's good that you're wary of people, but there are good people in this world too, you know. Hmm. Mind if I borrow your bathroom? I want to wash my sweat away. Sure. I know where the bathroom is, don't worry. Yes, I've been here before, so I know where the bathroom is. In case you want to reach the phone reporting me to the police. <laughs> Whoa, much better. I return to the living room once I finish showering. Henry is sitting there as if he's guarding the fort from the enemy invasion. In his case, the enemy is me. Although in his defense, he doesn't know me better yet. But but I, but I, do I look like someone who would just grope people just because I could? Don't you do that in gym class? It's outrageous. The disrespect. But I don't want him to feel uncomfortable, so I have to be careful about how I approach him. Let's see, I should ask him if I can sit down near him. Hey, you mind if I sit here? No, feel free. I carefully sit down on the couch, making sure that I'm not making sudden movements. Thank you. So, how was your day? Uh, so far so good. How about school? Is it going well for you? It's your first time going it's your first time going to an actual school after a while, right? Yeah, it's been fine. You making friends yet? Hmm, not really. Oh, is it because you're shy? I don't know. It feels like they don't like my presence there. Hmm. Well, hmm. Let's change the question. How do you like school? It's alright. That's good. How about homework? Are you having trouble with any? No, it's fine so far. The way he, re the way he replies to my questions, it's so disheartening. Work with me, boy. I'm trying my best to come up with something to talk about. At least say something open-ended so I can continue the conversation from there. Ugh, this is why I hate kids. It's not like I'm walking on eggshells with them. It's like I'm walking on eggshells with them. Uh, Dad says you're going to be my tutor. Are we doing it today? Oh, yeah, I'll start tutoring you today, but it's not time yet. I just happened to be here after my daily exercise, so I thought I'd stop by here. I see. You exercise, Henry? Uh, do you exercise, Henry? I don't, I don't know. Do people just fucking look like this? They take me for a walk from time to time, but other than that, I, what the fuck? How do you look like this? You've got that fuck. You got the. Mmm. Mmm. Boy, got them JoJo jeans. Got them Joe Star jeans. Whoa, really? You look like you do. Mom says it's genetic. Damn. Damn lucky. I'm jealous. Why? I have to work for it to maintain my physique. Otherwise, I'd just be a slab of meat. Uh, not literally. I'm just saying I have to be consistent about how I exercise. Ah, okay. I just thought everyone was like me. Second, like, you know, water time. All right, guys and gals, and we are back. Let's jump right back into it, shall we? Okay. <clears throat> nope. You just have it lucky. I see. Although if it's genetic, I suppose it's the same for your twin. Yeah. But are you in shape, though? What does that mean? Are you in good physical condition? Uh, I don't know. Do you get tired after doing things that require you to exert energy, even a little? I don't know. I'd never tried it before. What kind of life is this kid having? Hmm. Wanna find out? How? Just have a little bit of exercise and see if you can keep up. Do I really have to? No, unless you want to. I guess it's better than sitting here all day. That's the spirit. 
I noticed that you have a treadmill, but it's better than we head outside for a quick test. How about it? As long as it's near the house. Yep, we can do that near here. Let's go. Are you sure it's okay? What if I die? You won't die from jogging in place for 30 seconds. Don't be so dramatic. Don't jog too fast. Do it at your own pace. And by that you mean just sitting at home? No, jog. It's jogging. Eh, fine. Alright, I'll give you a cue when it's time. Ready, set, go! The first few seconds he's looking fine, but hitting the 15 second mark he struggles. Before we know it, he's already running out of breath at 22 seconds. He slumps down and just has himself lying down on the grass outside. That's rather impressive. That means I'm in shape, right? It's so bad that it's impressive. So much for being in shape. You mentioned having a walk here and there. For one minute, that's it. I feel like you need to start exercising more for your own sake. He finally gets his composure back. He gets up and brushes the grass off his clothes and fur. Eh, do I really have to? Yes, you need to. Because as of now, you're extremely out of shape. Sure, you may have the muscles thanks to genetics or whatever, but that doesn't change the fact that you have zero energy. Ah, <sighs> fine. Now I have to study and exercise. I'll exercise with you if it keeps you motivated. Ugh, but I can't have my parents know that I'm doing this. Why not? I don't know, it just feels like it. Promise me you won't tell them about this, then I'll think about exercising with you. Even though, even though he might not fully be sincere and serious about exercising, hearing that he wants to think about it is enough to bring a smile to my face. I promise. I pat his head several times and see his tail wagging left and right. <sighs> Embarrassing. Can we head in? Can we head back in? Sure. Oh? Hmm? Gilbert, nice seeing you here, dear. Phyllis gets out of the car and comes to give me a quick hug. Likewise, Phyllis. What are you boys doing outside? I was just playing with Henry. Right, Henry? Yeah. Oh, that's good then. Just like old times. Yeah, like old times. I see. Let's head back inside, both of you. There's no need for us to chat out here. Sure thing. We were just heading in. Hmm. Oh, some good water. Okay. Oh, you didn't offer anything for Gilbert, dear? Uh, Dad gave me an earful about missing bread. I don't want that to happen again. And I forgot. Ah, <laughs> it's okay. Don't forget about it next time, all right? Even just water is fine. Got it, Mom. Luckily for us, I got some snacks on my way home, so Edgar's stash will be left untouched. Don't worry. How's iced tea sound, both of you? I would like it. Thank you. Yeah. Can you help me in the kitchen, Henry, dear? Okay. We'll be back with some firm refreshments. Take your time. They both head into the kitchen. I hope Henry is not in trouble because he was outside with me. If he was, I would feel horrible. I sit there anxiously, waiting for either of them to return. Henry comes back with a teapot along with some, with some cups on a tray. Phyllis follows soon. Judging from their faces, I'd say nothing happened. Thank goodness. I heard you're tutoring my son today, is that right? Uh, yeah. Edgar asked if I could do that for him. I assume he has told you about it. Yes, he did, but not until last minute. But a good thing he has the best interest for Henry. Otherwise, I need to talk with him for deciding without me. Ha, I see. Well, at least he asked me before deciding by himself. Mm-hmm, I wouldn't agree to it if Henry didn't want to be tutored by me. Well, I'll leave my son in your capable hands. What does that mean, Mom? It means I'm counting on him to teach you. Oh. Ha, I bet, she, I bet he thinks that you meant it literally. He looks, em he looks embarrassed, and I think I hit a bullseye. I kind of feel bad for him, but I can't help letting out a small chuckle. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Yes, I just got home. Yes, yes, I have it covered. Feels like something I should be eavesdropping on. Let's pay it no mind. You and your parents are close, huh? You think so? Yeah, most people don't interact with their parents like that. I see. I suppose we are. But sometimes they're too strict. It's not fun. I'm sure they do it for your own good. I guess so, but I wish I had more freedom. Heh, <laughs> I feel you there. Sorry about that, boys. Don't worry about it, Phyllis. Was that from your work? Yes, but pay it no mind. Geez, you're working hard. It's Saturday. It should be your day off. It is my day off, but sometimes it just can't be helped. Aw, oh, Henry, dear. Hmm? Could you help me grab your dad's wallet upstairs? He forgot to bring it with him. Ah, sure. I look at Phyllis, and it reminds me of the promise I made with Henry. I'm not sure if keeping her in the dark is the best idea. It's a no-brainer that she knows something about her son that I don't. I want to tell her, but I made a promise with him. 
But what if he hasn't al what if he wasn't allowed to exert himself for medical reasons? It could go wrong if I push him harder than he's allowed to. I'm not about to let someone die because of me. I'll just suck it up and ask her. I'm sorry, Henry, but I have to break our promise for your own good. You have something to say to me, don't you? Huh? What do you mean? It's apparent that you're thinking about something. Oh, shoot. Is that noticeable? Yes, I live with boys who tend to think too much. You have the same facial expression as them whenever they overthink. Well, truth is... I see. So that's why you two were outside. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Please don't be mad at him. No, not at all. It's quite the opposite, actually. I'm glad he's starting to act like a normal child. Oh? I mean, yes, the accident left him weak for years, but he has most re mostly recovered, at least physically. I see. So, is it okay for us to continue? I think it's fine for him, at least in moderation. Just make sure to take it slow when it comes to his legs. It would hurt us, especially him if Edgar, if him and Edgar if... She's struggling to finish her sentence. Put my hand on her shoulder and tell her that it's okay. Thank you. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you a bit above and beyond. It's great. Excuse me. Appreciate it. Thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Shrezm Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye